This is our Zero Breeze one year review. Oh, you mean this thing? That thing. Sweet. We have owned our Zero Breeze for one year, so we are gonna tell you a little bit about how we use it, what we think it's best for, the pros, the cons, and if we think it's actually worth it. Full disclosure, a year ago, Zero Breeze did send us this Mark II for free. They wanted to test it out and have us give our honest review about it. We have a lot of thoughts on this unit after using it for as long as we have and actually have quite a few things to talk about. So let's get right into it. First of all, what is the Zero Breeze Mark II? And Savannah, I'm glad you asked that question. The Zero Breeze is a portable cooling unit. It is 2300 BTU. It's more of a personal cooling unit instead of a full air conditioner system but it's completely portable and you can bring it with you anywhere, which is really nice. The Zero Breeze comes with one battery straight out of the box. This is a 24 volt battery. It will run for about five hours off of this battery when it's fully charged. And the battery takes about five hours to charge off of the charger included in the box. Also, you could plug it into the wall if you do have power available. And currently it costs about $1,500 on the Zero Breeze website. As far as the power draw of the unit, we find that it runs between 200 to 240 watts on high. That really is indicative of how hot it is. If it's really hot, it's probably going to boost up to that full max, about 240. If it's a little cooler, it might cycle down to around 200. Either way, for a cooling unit, that's incredibly low. This unit weighs 16.5 pounds, and then if you add the battery onto the bottom of it, it does add some additional weight. So while it's too heavy to be carrying with you as you walk around day to day, it is pretty light for what it is, a whole air conditioning unit that is battery powered. So it's small enough to move from space to space with you, and we do end up shifting it around the bus and our shop as we work in the summertime. There are two areas on the back of the Mark II. There is the air outlet on the right and the air inlet on the left side. On the front, we have the air filter and above that is the blower where the cool air comes out. There are two hoses that connect to the back of the Mark II, one for the intake and one for the exhaust. There is also a tube that you can connect to the blower on the front so that you can direct the cool air wherever you want to in your space. Below the intake and exhaust on the bottom of the unit, we have the port to connect power. This is where you can connect either the battery or the plug to connect it to a regular 110 volt outlet. And next to that is where you can connect the condensation tube. Right above the blower, we have the main control panel. This is how you turn the Mark II on and off. So from left to right, we have the fan mode. This is where the compressor does not turn on and the unit just works as a fan. Next, we have strong mode. This is where everything works at full load and it's producing maximum output. Next, we have cool mode, which is just a regular air conditioning mode. Then there is sleep mode, which turns off the control panel lights. And finally, there's a light button, which turns on a light ring around the blower on the front. There's a plus and minus button right next to the power, and that is to control the fan speed to turn it up or down. In the center of the blower on the front, there is a temperature display that will tell you the temperature of the air that's coming out of the Mark II. Using this Zero Breeze is actually very simple. You're going to choose to use it either with the battery pack or to plug it directly into the wall. Both use the same plug. So if you're using the battery, it clips right onto the bottom of the main unit. You connect the plugs between the two, turn the battery on and you can then turn the Mark II on and it will power up. If you're choosing to plug it directly into a wall outlet, you can use the provided power cord. It connects directly into the same port that the battery does, so that is really convenient. You're using the same port for whatever power source you're using.
power it on, you press the power button on the front and the light on the back of the unit will turn red. This means that it's on, but it's in startup mode. This is where you can select what power mode you want to use. We usually use strong mode and we turn the fan all the way up. Now you just have to wait for that red light to turn blue. That means that your compressor has kicked on and there's now cool air coming from the blower on the front. In general, this startup process for the whole thing to kick on takes 20 to 30 seconds. As far as the volume of this unit while it's running, there is some noise, but compared to other AC units we've used, it's probably quieter, so it's certainly not very annoying. As far as a reference point for the volume, I would say that the Zero Breeze is pretty comparable to our fantastic roof vent fan running on low. So those were some of the basic facts about Zero Breeze, some more technical information. Now we're going to tell you about how we actually use this unit. One year ago, we did our first review after receiving the Zero Breeze. We've been using it a few weeks and we mostly used it in our workshop. At the time we were doing our unicell build and it really, really helped to have the Zero Breeze in the actual box of the unicell while we were welding and putting up furring strips and building during the hottest months of the summer. And I would sometimes put the Zero Breeze in our bus while I was video editing on those really hot days. Then later in the summer, the ACE unit that we have in our bus, which is a modified window unit, the compressor broke on the window air conditioner and we didn't have the time or the budget to be able to fix it. But we had the Zero Breeze. So we started using the Zero Breeze way more often in our bus. From there on out, it really became our main AC unit. To this day, we have not fixed our window AC unit and we're still using the Zero Breeze. So I would say that we have given it a really good test at this point, both in our workshop while we're building and day to day in our bus. Like we mentioned before, the Mark II is about 2300 BTU. This means it's more of a personal small space cooling unit. I do all of our video editing and I work on my computer for at least a few hours every day. That can get brutal in the summer. Our shuttle bus is mostly windows, which is really beautiful and you have great views but in the summertime, it heats up really quick. Being able to set the zero breeze on the counter and direct that cool air right towards me while I'm working has been a complete game changer for me. I look forward to sitting in the bus in front of the zero breeze because it's so much cooler and it's so nice to have cool air blowing directly at you. And the dogs know it too, because they curl right up next to me when I have that zero breeze pointed at me and I'm working. They are right there with me, soaking in all the cool air. So the dogs nap in the cool air while I'm working. We all soak it in and everybody is happy. On really hot days, we can pull the curtain across the bed area and then just put the tube from the zero breeze into the bed area and it's enough BTU to cool that small space. So if it's like 90 degrees, like really hot out, it's amazing to have that option. And it really does cool that bed area and particularly at night when you're trying to sleep. That's when I think it's most important. Any form of AC in a vehicle, I think that's when you want it the most. It's great to have in the day, but if you can't sleep at night, you're miserable. So having that is huge. Yeah, when it's 90 plus degrees, being able to pull that curtain across the bed area is huge. It's essentially making a small room out of that bed area and the Zero Breeze has no problem cooling a space that small. So it's really helpful when it's hot, it's humid here in New York, you don't wanna be outside and we can just put a movie on and stay cool just in that small little space. I think anytime you're completely relying on off-grid solar and battery power to cool your space, it's probably more realistic to just try to cool one area. And that's what I really like about the Zero Breeze is the watt draw is so low. And if we just try to cool the bed area, which is how we use it, we can run that thing 
all the time because it's only pulling 200 to 240 watts as opposed to the amount of power it takes to cool the whole bus through a bigger unit it's kind of hard to sustain that even with a lot of solar and battery there's limitations with this you can pretty much at least us run it all the time and always keep the bed area cool it is so hard to sleep when it's hot and humid and it's sticky. That is a miserable, miserable night. Though the Zero Breeze having such a low watt draw allows us to run it all night long with no issues. We can stay cool and actually get a good night of sleep. The final way that we use this Mark II and one of the biggest ways is for the pups. The dogs love the Zero Breeze. We introduced Mateo to it last year and he had no idea what it was we kind of plopped it down in front of him and he was a little apprehensive about it but once we turned it on and he realized that cool air was coming out of the front the zero breeze was his best friend for the rest of the summer wherever the zero breeze was that's where you could find Mateo and I think it's safe to say that Pablo is the same we introduced him to it just a few weeks ago and he just naps right in front of the tube Wherever the tube is pointing, blowing cool air out the front, that's where Pablo is. A big aspect of having Pablo and Mateo with the bus is that sometimes we have to leave them alone, and that becomes a lot more challenging in the summertime. As we mentioned, our vehicle does get pretty warm with all of those windows, and having the Zero Breeze is really the only thing that gives us peace of mind to leave them alone for short periods of time. Things like running into the grocery store or when we're doing a more dangerous aspect of our build process like welding, we can put them into the cab of the vehicle or back in the bed area. And it just gives us peace of mind that they're okay in the bus so we can leave them alone for a little while. We did this last year with Mateo when we were building the unicell, when we were welding all that framework or painting, something where he couldn't be involved. We would put him into the cab, close the cab door, and stick the Zero Breeze into the window, and we knew that he was nice and cool up there. So as we said in our first review, I think pets is one of the biggest uses for the Zero Breeze, and it's definitely one of the best ways that it's worked for us. Honestly, I think Pablo and Mateo might be the biggest fans of the Zero Breeze. They might even like it more than we do. Now it's time for the pros and cons list. Let's break it down. We'll start with the cons and then we'll finish with the good stuff. First up, the cons. And I have the same con that I had last year that I really don't love about the unit out of the box. And that is the power port on the battery and the unit. There's only one spot, which means you have to connect either the battery or plug it into the wall and you can't charge the battery and run the unit at the same time with what comes in the original box. They do give you the option on the website, you can buy another charger for 150, or they have the splitter for 130, and I really kind of wish the splitter came with it, because that is a charger that splits two ways, so you can charge and run the unit while you're plugged into the wall, and I really like that option. I'm glad that it is available. I just kind of wish it was included with the original purchase. That is definitely our biggest con on this list, but we have just a few more really tiny nitpicky things. The next one is just the exterior of the Zero Breeze, the paint on the outside. I want to mention we are pretty hard on things <laughs> and we are working on builds around power tools and welding. So the Zero Breeze has gotten a little bit scratched up. Some of the paint has chipped. It's just not quite as durable on the exterior as I would have liked to see, but everything is still functioning and it doesn't look terrible. There's just a few little cosmetic dings. And the last con, and we've mentioned this before, it's back to the power port. I love how it threads in and it locks in. That's a great design, but it's just so tight around there. I cannot get my fingers in there barely. You just have to have Savannah thread the little <laughs> thing just because it's so close to the plastic that it's hard to get your fingers in there. Really minor, but it's just something for me I get a little annoyed with. Still one year later, <laughs> I'm the one that has to connect the battery and the power cord. I'm still here the connecting those clunky things. Clunky fingers, so oh well. <laughs> Let's get to the good stuff. We are gonna wrap this video up with the biggest pros of a Zero Breeze Mark II, the biggest 
benefits that we think it has. First off, the biggest thing is it's completely portable. While it has some weight, you can still just grab it and move it wherever you want. Whether you're blowing it right on yourself or you're trying to cool a small area, you can't beat the portability and there isn't much in the market that is even capable of this. This is one of the only units out there that can even do this. So pretty cool. We have used this unit while car camping. We have a little runner car here in New York that does not have AC and we will frequently stick the zero breeze in there either in the back for the dogs or in the front for us. We've used it in guest rooms at families' houses last year when our bus broke down. We've brought this into so many different scenarios, including day to day in our bus, our shop, in our vehicle last year while we were building. You just can't beat the options of being able to move it around versus a hardwired AC unit. Just the versatility of this unit is something really, really valuable. Our next pro is something that you'll encounter here in the Northeast, also in the South. It's a big one and that is a dehumidifier. Mm -hmm. This unit removes a ton of water from the air in our bus. You can see that through the condensation tube. We usually run that right into our sink and it is constantly removing water from the air. That is big because at least for me, the humidity is oppressive. I am not a fan. And the summers here will get 90 plus with humidity and I just cannot function. So it is really working overtime to dehumidify and that just makes the air feel cooler in general. Yeah, you could really see this if you don't have the option of putting the drain into the sink. You could put that right into like a water bottle and we noticed when we ran it a whole night, it filled up like a large pitcher of water. So that's how much moisture it's pulling out of the air and you definitely feel that. The next pro is probably almost as big as the portability and that is the power draw. For what it's doing in cooling a space, it's pulling a very small amount of power. And you can realistically run this thing all night as long as you have a decent sized battery bank you're not going to have an issue and then having the option of a battery pack or a second battery pack as well to run it off of so when you can charge those things up it's just there's a lot of options there and it pulling a max of 240 watts realistically you could run this thing off of a decent sized solar system that's something we love is the options with the power draw. You can choose to go into a coffee shop and charge your battery for a few hours, or you can charge it off of an external power bank connected to solar panels. You can plug the Zero Breeze directly into a wall. You can plug it directly into a power bank. You can use it off of the battery. There's so many ways that you can integrate this into whatever power setup you have in your bus, in your van, in your RV. There's just just a lot of options and when it comes to these systems options is best because being on the road for us comes with a lot of unpredictability and you want to be able to tailor your system for whatever is going on yeah and I would really like to point out that while the comparison may not be exactly a direct comparison of the zero breeze to like an AC unit that's gonna cool a whole space um, if you're talking about the money while $1,500 is a good chunk of money up front to pay for this thing, if you look at what you will need to invest into solar and battery wise to actually run a unit that will cool your whole space, which will probably almost always have limitations still, unless you put like serious money into, I think bang for your buck of what you're getting, the fact that you can run it all night pretty easily, I think it's actually kind of pretty affordable if you look at it that way. And that leads us into our final pro, which is zero setup. It works immediately right out of the box. There's no install. You don't have to go buy parts and pieces and set things up and drill holes and run wires. You just get this unit, take it out of the box, charge the battery or plug it right in and you're good to go. So if you're looking for an AC option where there is zero install, this might be exactly what you're looking for. I would also like to acknowledge the fact that you can run a cooling unit off a battery pack. That's pretty incredible. So if you don't have direct access to power at some point, the fact that you can still run this thing for up to five hours on a battery, it's pretty insane. After one year of using this Zero Breeze Mark II, 
we really like it. If you want an AC solution that you can use directly out of the box, it's portable, it's a low power draw, maybe you have a smaller power system, or you just don't wanna go through the hassle of permanently installing something into your rig, this could be a great option for you. We've certainly enjoyed it so much more than we thought we would. Originally, we thought this would mostly stay in our shop, in the vehicles that we're working on, but it's really kind of migrated over into our bus, into our day-to-day -day life. Pablo and Mateo certainly approve. We approve too. We will be doing a giveaway for a Zero Breeze Mark II coming up in July. So yes. stay tuned for the info on that. We will be doing that here on YouTube. So you have the possibility to win one of these for free. We'll have more details coming up about that. Big July special announcement coming very soon. It's gonna be a lot of fun and Zero Breeze is part of it. And we're really excited they're part of it. And somebody's gonna get a Zero Breeze for free, which man, that sounds awesome. I wish I could win it. You already have one. <laughs> yeah, but I'll take a second one. In the meantime, you can use our code OWTR on the Zero Breeze website to get $50 off. All right, guys, that is all we have for you today. Those are our final thoughts on a whole year of using the Zero Breeze. We really enjoy it, and we hope that you enjoyed our breakdown, kind of the technical parts, what we use it for, and how we've liked it so far. Stay tuned in the coming weeks for your chance to win a Zero Breeze of your own, and until then, we will see you guys later.